society has convinced itself that somehow an 11 year old thinks it's fun or better or more exciting to be being prostituted than it is to be in a, in a, at home. Um, I'm very frustrated by that because I can't imagine as a father one of my daughters choosing to have sex with what is equating to a father figure or in some cases very disgusting, violent, and even the normal ones that are supposed to be the father figures, they're going to choose to do this? It doesn't make any sense. So what? how can you tell the people out there that there's something that these children are running from that we've got to try to figure out? What, what would you say to them that this is not fun for these kids? It's not something that they would choose given any real option. This is how it works. These children are abused, oftentimes sexually abused, at the hands of their first caregivers, mom, dad, mom's boyfriends, grandpa, uncles, other family members. When they're old enough to be mobile, 11 or 12, they run away. And they, and they are on bus benches in areas of town that they shouldn't be and they're not supervised and hours of night that they should not be out there. And they get kidnapped, they get picked up by a pimp. A good pimp will say to them, look around you. All men want from you is to have sex with you. And for any young girl in society, whether you're walking past a construction site or down the street, there's men whistling and waving. Mm -hmm. And a pimp will say, you don't have to lay in your bed at home and wait for your dad or your mom's boyfriend to come into your bedroom and have his way with you. I can show you how to take control of the sexual abuse. You can make men pay you for it, and you can limit it to the kind of sex that you want to have or that you're willing to give. A pimp teaches a young girl how to take control of the sexual abuse, and then he develops a relationship with her that it's me and you against the world. So it's an ownership, partnership, and I'm going to be your helper. Yes, and it can either be characterized by a loving relationship or characterized by dominance and violence. So now let's get that one. I think that's an important thought because what you hear from people all the time is, well, I would never, I mean, she could leave anytime she wants. So if you could for me, let's go down a scenario of each one of those. How is it that a child, a normal child, let's say, any normal child, because they're all normal at about 11 unless they've been abused, relatively as human beings, right? How is it that child gets turned into um, a slave of this individual? What is the process that they go through? I don't like the word slave because I okay. think that's what makes the do-gooder have power over the victim mm -hmm. and, and creates an appropriate social distance that makes okay. the do-gooder feel okay. Right. Children's Night's all about empowering children. And uh, I, I ask my children, is anyone here a slave? And they go, no, I'm not a slave, you know, okay. because they're well, not. Know. How, do you, how do you get out of being a slave, you know? Right. It's, it, it, the do-gooder is controlling just like the pimp is controlling, just like the police, mm -hmm. you know, is controlling. Um, how do, they were exploited at home. Life with a pimp could be better than home. Mm -hmm. We live in a country where you cannot take a newborn out of a hospital without a car seat. Yet, you can take that newborn directly in that car seat to a crack house and nobody's looking until right. perhaps kindergarten. And we've seen recent cases to prove that that actually, I mean, very public cases of the sale of a young girl um, where she ended up dead in this particular case, tragically. But, but that's not new. Drug yeah. addicts have right. always sold their children or traded their children for sex. What's mm -hmm. new is calling it human sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. When drugs took hold of in the 80s to where we had parents that were not just alcoholics but parents that were drug addicts we saw a whole change in the family relationship and the treatment of children because the drug is, is so important we have children who are sold by their parents I've had children tell me that their mother laid on a bed and they were on the bed in the same room when they were four years old with the drug dealer who was having sex with them um, this is not new it's it's we just we're still failing to address the bottom issue of drug addiction in this country. And as long as you have drugs and a tolerance of drugs and not adequate treatment, mm -hmm. you're going to have the exploitation of children. And that aspect, there's other kinds of exploitation of children as well. Hi, I'm Dr. Lois Lee, the founder and the president of Children of the Night. If you or you know a child that's involved in prostitution in the streets of America, please do not hesitate to call our hotline for help. You can call 
1300 extension zero. There's someone there to help you 24 hours a day. Please call that number. Don't wait now. Should you require more information on Children of the Night, go to our website at childrenofthenight.org. We're here to help. So when, when they, because, I, you know, I know that you're talking about a self-esteem destruction thing in, in, in a very large way where it, it is a, I think the old model is brain, in brainwashing was, you know, you, you tear them down to the point where they don't feel they have value and then you build it back. Family does field. that. Right. So, and, but that's what allows the child to run away or run to something. She runs away and she finds herself in a situation where someone befriends her and who befriends her but a, a pimp. A pimp who knows how to how to talk to her. Mm -hmm. He knows how to do that identity conversion. You know, children do not get involved in prostitution until their sexual dignity has been taken from them. And one of the most insidious things about pimps is that they don't necessarily lie. They will say to you, you know, I didn't make you a prostitute. Your dad did that. You're hope to die ho. Your dad knew you were a hoe, that's why he had sex with you. He makes it personal as if it was her fault when she was an infant or a preschooler. Right from the beginning. Yes. Yeah. Like a child like that could invite, I mean, that's the sickness of this whole discussion in yes. some ways. Is how is it, how can anyone believe that a child would invite this upon themselves, which is probably my biggest frustration when I hear, well, she's free to do what she wants. And, there are people that believe in American society that some children ask for it. No, that's my point, and it just disgusts me. I mean, that's yes. the thing that frustrates me probably more than anything. Um, so, with that said, when you get them and you you how you do your intake, you do their, your intake here. Mm -hmm. Well, we do uh, the intake on the telephone. Well, so you do it. Okay, why, why don't you walk me through the process from the first call a little bit here, so people can understand what you're doing for these children. First call out to that day you hand them a laptop and send them off to college? Well, they could call from a truck stop. They could be in a motel room with no clothes and the pimp has left them there and he's coming back. And so it, it's, it's a coordination. It's, it's what our new webinar is about, is how do you coordinate law enforcement? How do you get a child out of there? Uh, call me, a child may call saying she's going to kill herself, may have drugs. You may, you may have five or six calls from a child before she actually decides to come into shelter. Okay. Um, but then they may actually decide and, and you make arrangements. You may send a cab if they're local to bring them into shelter. Um, the process this is, is a national. We do, we do that. Then the what we do right. is we ask other organizations to inter intercept the children. I have law enforcement contacts throughout the country. I have good friends in law enforcement who will go out and pick up a child, take a child to the airport without booking her. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll pay for the airfare to bring the child in. We pick the child up at the airport. Okay. Sometimes we'll put them in an existing shelter so they can have a cooling out period for two to three days to see if they're going to stay so we're not a plane ticket to Hollywood per se. Um, but you're developing that relationship on the telephone, whether it's a cry for help or whether it's calling up and they're high and they want to talk or whether they're calling up and uh, they're in detention and trying to escape detention. We okay. have calls from judges, we have calls from parents, probation officers, social workers, a network of people throughout the United States. We serve children from 15 different states each year. And um, once the child comes in, they're really taken back by what they see here in the Children of the Night home. The smell of home-cooked meals by our chefs, um, the, the genuineness of staff that gives them, you know, goes through all of their belongings and explains more about what's going on, gives them their hygiene items, gives them a fresh pair of clothes, offers them bacterial shower if they need it and asks if they're pregnant. If they're pregnant, they shouldn't take it. Um, doesn't force that upon them, walks them through the program, introduces them to other children, shows them their bedroom, Room, tells them what the schedule's like. Um, I remember just a, six, eight months ago, a group from San Diego brought up a little girl who was just traumatized and, and just broken down. And, and I was at the front and I said, well, let's go see the other kids because it's break. At three o'clock break, they have snack and they have hot fudge sundaes and the things mm -hmm. that kids should have. It is very warm here, I must say. I, I, it's very homey and the, this is my probably my fourth time being here, but um, I, I'm never um it has never lost on me how warm it is here I mean, mm -hmm. that's that's a really terrific thing but this young girl was up front and with the staff from the san diego program and i brought her to the back with the other kids were having snack and i said hi everybody i said this is and i introduced the little girl and all the girls gathered around her and giggly and teenagers and the staff people looked at me and said it's like a girl's sorority 